Dallas, Texas, August 10, 2014. The serene quiet of an upscale neighborhood is shattered as police cordon off a house on Maple Drive. Inside, they discover a scene that defies the tranquility of the surroundings. What began as a seemingly ordinary affair has spiraled into a tangled web of deception, betrayal, and ultimately, murder. The story that unravels will leave you questioning how well you know those closest to you. Dallas, 2000. Maria and David Thompson were the kind of couple people admired. Their lives seemed perfect from the outside. Maria, who was 26, worked as a successful real estate agent. She had a natural charm and knew how to close deals, making her one of the top agents in Dallas. David, at 28, was an investment banker. His job was demanding, but he thrived on the pressure, constantly pushing for more success. Together, they lived in a large house in an affluent neighborhood, complete with all the luxuries that came with their successful careers. They had nice cars, hosted elegant dinner parties, and were often seen as the ideal couple in their social circle. David's younger brother, Andrew, was a regular visitor at their home. Andrew was 24, an aspiring musician with a carefree spirit that contrasted sharply with David's serious and responsible nature. Andrew was the kind of person who could light up a room just by walking into it. He wasn't tied down by the same responsibilities as David. Instead, Andrew lived a life of spontaneity, pursuing his music career with passion, but without much success. Despite this, he remained optimistic and continued to chase his dream. Andrew often stayed with David and Maria for weeks at a time, especially when he was between gigs or needed a place to crash. Over time, his presence became a constant in their lives. At first, Maria and Andrew's relationship was just friendly. They would chat about music, life, and the future. But as time passed, their conversations became more personal, more intimate. The two of them found themselves sharing secrets and spending more time together when David was at work. By 2005, the bond between Maria and Andrew had grown beyond just friendship. It was a secret, passionate connection that neither of them had anticipated. They knew what they were doing was wrong, but the excitement, the thrill of sneaking around, made it impossible for them to stop. They began to meet in secret, choosing locations where they wouldn't be recognized. Sometimes it was at a hotel across town. Other times it was in the back seat of Andrew's car parked in a secluded area. They exchanged coded messages, hiding their affair from everyone, especially David. As the years went on, their affair became more intense. Maria and Andrew couldn't get enough of each other. Every moment they spent apart felt like torture. The risk of getting caught only added to the intensity of their relationship. They knew they were walking a dangerous line, but the thought of ending the affair was too painful to consider. In 2007, Andrew began to pressure Maria to leave David. He was tired of living in the shadows, of sneaking around like a criminal. He wanted to be with Maria openly to start a new life together. But Maria was torn. She loved Andrew deeply but she was also accustomed to the life she had with David. The stability, the luxury, the respect she received from others, all of that was hard to give up. Maria found herself trapped between two lives, unable to fully commit to either. By 2012, the cracks in their secret began to show. The thrill of the affair started to fade as the reality of their situation set in. They both knew that it couldn't go on forever. Maria was becoming more distant, worried that someone might find out. 
Andrew, on the other hand, grew frustrated. He couldn't understand why Maria wouldn't just leave David. The tension between them grew, leading to frequent arguments. The relationship that had once been filled with passion was now clouded with doubt and frustration. In May 2014, David, who had always been suspicious of Andrew's frequent visits, decided to take action. David had noticed subtle changes in Maria's behavior, the way she would smile at her phone, the sudden work meetings that kept her out late, and the hushed phone calls she thought he didn't hear. David hired a private investigator to find out what was really going on. For weeks, the investigator followed Maria, documenting her every move. On June 10, 2014, the investigator handed David a folder filled with photographs and text messages that confirmed his worst fears. The evidence was undeniable. Maria was having an affair with Andrew. The betrayal cut deep. David felt a rage he had never experienced before, but he didn't show it. Instead, he calmly thanked the investigator and began to plan his next move. On June 15, 2014, David confronted Maria. It was a warm evening and Maria had just returned home from one of her supposed meetings. She was startled to find David waiting for her in the living room, the folder of evidence laid out on the coffee table. David's face was calm, but there was an intensity in his eyes that Maria had never seen before. Without raising his voice, David asked her to sit down. He then began to show her the photographs one by one. Maria's face drained of color as she realized she had been caught. She tried to deny it at first, claiming the photos were fake, but the evidence was too overwhelming. David then pulled out the printouts of the text messages, each one more damning than the last. Maria broke down, begging for forgiveness, insisting that the affair meant nothing and that she still loved David. But David wasn't interested in her apologies. His trust in her had been shattered and there was no repairing the damage that had been done. After hours of tense conversation, David stood up, looked at Maria one last time, and walked out of the room. He didn't raise his voice, he didn't cry, but Maria could tell from the look in his eyes that something inside him had changed. Over the next few days, David's mind raced with thoughts of revenge. He was consumed by anger and betrayal, but he didn't want to act impulsively. David knew that if he was going to do something, he had to be careful, meticulous even. He began researching ways to commit the perfect crime, spending hours on the internet looking up cases of murder and deception. He read articles, watched videos, and even downloaded books on criminal psychology. By June 20th, 2014, David had devised a plan it wasn't enough to just kill Maria. He wanted Andrew to suffer as well. David decided that he would murder Maria and frame Andrew for the crime. He believed that if he planned everything down to the smallest detail, he could pull it off without getting caught. David's methodical nature meant that every aspect of the plan was carefully considered. David started by collecting evidence that would incriminate Andrew. He planted some of Andrew's belongings in the house, things that would place him at the scene of the crime. David then began to manipulate Maria's and Andrew's digital correspondence, leaving a trail that pointed to a heated argument between the two of them. He knew the police would find it, and it would help solidify Andrew's motive. By July 1, 2014, David had everything he needed. All that was left was to wait for the perfect moment to strike. David maintained a calm exterior, going about his daily routine as if nothing was wrong. But inside, he was seething with rage. 
counting down the days until he could finally execute his plan. August 1st, 2014. David's mind had been racing for days. The anger and betrayal he felt had turned into a chilling resolve. He decided that Maria's life had to end and Andrew had to take the fall for it. This wasn't a decision made in the heat of the moment, but rather a cold, calculated plan that had been forming ever since he discovered their affair. David knew he had to be meticulous. Every detail had to be perfect. He couldn't afford any mistakes that might tie him to the murder. His first step was to manipulate the evidence to make it appear as though Andrew had committed the crime. David began by collecting items that would later place Andrew at the scene. This included traces of Andrew's DNA, which David carefully planted on various objects around the house. Over the next few days, he worked on erasing any evidence that could connect him to what was about to happen. He cleaned surfaces he knew he would touch and made sure that any item that might be used in the crime had been wiped down to remove his fingerprints. David also began planting evidence in places where the police would easily find it. He had managed to secretly collect some of Andrew's blood, which he kept stored in a small vial in the back of the fridge. This blood would play a crucial role in framing Andrew. David knew that once the police saw it, they would immediately believe Andrew was the killer. August 9th, 2014. This was the day David had marked on his calendar. He had gone through the plan in his mind, over and over, making sure that nothing was left to chance. By the time the day arrived, David was calm, his emotions buried deep beneath the surface. He spent the day, as he usually did, going to work and interacting with his colleagues as if it were any other day. But inside, he knew that by the time the sun rose the next morning, his life would change forever. That evening, David prepared everything. He chose the kitchen as the place where he would confront Maria. It was a room that could easily be cleaned, and it had the added benefit of being where Maria felt most comfortable. David prepared two glasses of wine, one for himself and one for Maria. The wine he had set aside for Maria was laced with a powerful sedative, something he had obtained weeks earlier under the guise of needing help to sleep. David waited in the living room, pretending to watch TV, until he heard the familiar sound of Maria's car pulling into the driveway. It was 10 gown p.m. when Maria walked through the door. She looked tired, but there was a faint smile on her face, a smile that disappeared the moment she saw David. She knew something was wrong, but David quickly reassured her, telling her he wanted to talk things over, to forgive her for what she had done. Maria, relieved, accepted the glass of wine he offered her. As Maria sipped the wine, they talked. David acted as if he wanted to mend their relationship, and Maria, believing his lies, began to relax. But as the minutes passed, she started to feel drowsy, her head becoming heavy. David watched her carefully, noting the moment when her eyelids began to droop. Within minutes, Maria was unconscious, slumped over in her chair. David wasted no time. He dragged Maria's limp body to the garage, where he had already prepared the scene. David placed one of Andrew's guitar picks on the floor near Maria's body, making it appear as though it had been dropped during a struggle. He then took the vial of blood he had collected from Andrew and carefully smeared it on Maria's clothing, making sure to leave it in places where the police would easily find it. David knew this blood evidence would be crucial in convincing the police 
that Andrew was the killer. David then took a kitchen knife, one of Andrew's favorites, which Andrew often used for his art projects. It was a unique knife, easily identifiable, and David knew the police would quickly connect it to Andrew. With the knife in hand, David stabbed Maria in the chest, making sure to inflict a wound that would match the size and shape of the blade. He had studied crime scenes enough to know how to make it look like a struggle had taken place. After stabbing Maria, David arranged her body to make it look like she had tried to fight off her attacker. He overturned a few items in the garage, knocked over a chair, and placed some of Andrew's personal belongings near the body. Everything was set up to create a narrative. Andrew had attacked Maria in a fit of rage, killing her in a violent struggle. Once he was satisfied with the scene, David set about cleaning up. He removed any trace of his presence, wiping down surfaces and making sure that nothing would tie him to the crime. He was methodical, taking his time to ensure that the only evidence left behind would point directly to Andrew. August 10, 2014. At 8 Gaon AM, David made the call to the police. His voice was shaky, filled with feigned shock and horror, as he told the dispatcher that he had found his wife dead in the garage. The police arrived within minutes, the scene quickly turning into a flurry of activity as officers cordoned off the area and began their investigation. David played the role of the grieving husband perfectly. He answered the detective's questions, sticking to his story that Andrew must have killed Maria. The evidence the police found seemed to support his claims. The knife, the guitar pick, the bloodstains, all of it pointed to Andrew. The detectives were quick to issue a warrant for Andrew's arrest, believing they had found their killer. By August 11, 2014, Andrew was in custody, shocked and confused as the police told him he was being charged with the murder of Maria Thompson. Andrew protested his innocence, but the evidence against him was overwhelming. David watched from the sidelines, his expression blank, as his plan unfolded just as he had envisioned. The morning was heavy with tension, as police officers arrived at Andrew's apartment. He had just woken up when they knocked on his door, the sound echoing ominously in the quiet hallway. Andrew opened the door, his face still groggy with sleep, only to be greeted by the stern faces of the detectives. They informed him that he was under arrest for the murder of Maria Thompson. Andrew was stunned he had no idea what was happening. The officers handcuffed him and led him to the patrol car. All the while, his mind raced, trying to make sense of the situation. At the station, Andrew was taken into an interrogation room, a cold, sterile space designed to make even the innocent feel guilty. The detectives sat across from him, their expressions unreadable. They began questioning him about his relationship with Maria, asking pointed questions about the affair and what had happened on the night of August 9th. Andrew answered truthfully, admitting to the affair, but vehemently denying any involvement in Maria's murder. He insisted that he loved Maria and could never hurt her. However, the detectives weren't convinced the evidence against him was too strong to ignore. They presented him with the damning details, the knife, the guitar pick, the blood, all of it pointed to him. The detectives also showed him the text messages between him and Maria, messages that revealed their secret meetings and their plans to be together. These messages, in the eyes of the law, provided a motive for murder. Andrew was devastated. He could see how it all looked, but he knew he was innocent. The reality of the situation hit him hard, 
He was being framed, but he had no idea how or why. August 15th, 2014. As the investigation progressed, detectives began to notice inconsistencies in David's story. He had been calm, too calm, they thought, for a man who had just lost his wife in such a brutal way. His composure, which initially seemed like strength, now appeared suspicious. The detectives decided to dig deeper into David's alibi. They reviewed security footage from cameras around the neighborhood, hoping to verify his movements on the night of the murder. What they found surprised them. The footage showed David's car leaving the house multiple times during the night. This was a significant discovery because David had claimed he was home all night. The detectives knew they had to follow this lead. Why had David left the house? Where had he gone? These were questions that needed answers. The detectives also took note of the fact that David had been unusually cooperative throughout the investigation. It was as if he wanted to help, which, in their experience, was not typical of someone who had just experienced such a traumatic event. This behavior added to their growing suspicion that David might be hiding something. August 18, 2014. Armed with the new information from the security footage, the detectives obtained a warrant to search David's office and home. They believed that David might have been involved in the crime in some way, and they were determined to find out how. The search of David's office was thorough. Detectives combed through his computer, files, and personal belongings, looking for anything that could link him to the murder. It wasn't long before they found what they were looking for. On David's computer, they discovered a series of internet searches that painted a chilling picture. He had searched for terms like how to frame someone for murder and perfect crime. These searches were conducted in the weeks leading up to Maria's death. This was a turning point in the investigation. The evidence suggested that David had planned Maria's murder and had carefully orchestrated the scene to frame Andrew. The search of David's home uncovered more damning evidence. Hidden in his garage was a box containing items that connected him to the crime. Gloves, cleaning supplies, and a vial containing Andrew's blood. This was enough to confirm the detective's suspicions. David's carefully constructed plan was starting to unravel, and the detectives were beginning to see the full picture. August 20th, 2014. With the new evidence in hand, the detectives moved quickly. David was arrested at his office, where he had been working as if nothing had happened. He was taken into custody and charged with the murder of Maria Thompson and the attempted framing of his brother Andrew. The arrest shocked everyone who knew David. He had always been seen as the successful, stable older brother, the one who had everything under control. But now that image was shattered. David was placed in a holding cell where he awaited his trial. Meanwhile, Andrew was released from custody, his name cleared, but his life forever changed. The ordeal had taken a heavy toll on him. He couldn't believe that his own brother had tried to frame him for murder. The betrayal cut deep, and the loss of Maria weighed heavily on his heart. October 2014, the trial of David Thompson was a spectacle. The media followed every development, with reporters camped outside the courthouse, eager for any new detail. The prosecution presented a compelling case against David, laying out the evidence in painstaking detail. They showed the jury the security footage, the planted evidence, and the internet searches that revealed David's sinister plan. Andrew took the stand, testifying about his relationship with Maria and how David had manipulated him. He spoke about the guilt he felt for the affair, 
but also about the shock and disbelief that his own brother had betrayed him in such a cruel way. The courtroom was silent as Andrew described the events that led to Maria's death, his voice heavy with emotion. David's defense team tried to argue that he had been driven to madness by the affair, that his actions were the result of a temporary lapse in sanity. But the jury was unmoved. The evidence was overwhelming, and the cold, calculated nature of the crime was impossible to ignore. November 2nd, 2014. After three days of deliberation, the jury returned a guilty verdict. David was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The sentence was a fitting end to a case that had shocked the community and left a family in ruins. Andrew was left to pick up the pieces of his life. Though he had been cleared of any wrongdoing, the affair had cost him everything. His lover, his brother, and his peace of mind. The story of the Thompson family became a cautionary tale a reminder of how quickly things can spiral out of control and how the darkest secrets can tear even the closest families apart. The question remains, what drives a man to such extreme lengths? Was it the betrayal of a wife he once loved or the twisted logic of a mind obsessed with control? Let me know your thoughts. And don't forget to subscribe for more stories that delve into the darkest corners of human nature.